Hello, and welcome. I was gonna say my name is Panda, but no, <laughs> this is gonna be more a more serious video. My name is Brandon Dennison, and I just recently finished two tabletop games. And when I say finished, I mean I came up with the theme, uh, the themes. Um, I finished all the components, got them all together, and I placed an order into the GameCrafter.com. The reason why I came up with these games in the first place was because there is a small box contest going on uh, at thegamecrafter.com, as you see on your screen. I know I don't have the contest page up, but this is where everything is located at thegamecrafter.com. I feel like I'm plugging them when I... It's just, it's just how it is, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> so, um, I'm making this video because I just want to show these off. This is my... These are my second and third attempt at making any type of gaming product on the gamecrafter.com. I haven't gone, I haven't looked anywhere else, honestly. My first project, which is Potato the Card Game, uh, is not finished. And the only reason why it's not finished is because I don't have all the art ready for it. And I'm not ready to venture out yet and ask for art and pay hundreds of dollars for that art because <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> Well, I, I shouldn't say I'm poor, but I'm, I'm not wealthy at all. So, I was waiting for the music to come back on. By the way, this is from Diablo 2. Um, that's another reason why I made, I, I'm making this video, is because huh, I live and breathe gaming, and I have my entire life. And, not, and I'm not going to give you my whole life story because that's just boring. I'm not going to bore you with with history. Ugh, ew, history, yuck. I just want to give you a little bit of insight as to who I am, um, why I made these, other than, you know, for the contest, of course. And hopefully what, what my goals and aspirations are from this point onward. So like I said earlier, um, I live and breathe gaming. The music you're hearing is from a radio station, a shoutcast radio station. So just any old video game music will pop on. Like, I don't even know what this is from. I've, I've never heard this before, but it sounds great. I've been playing video games since 1992. I've been playing tabletop games since 1994. But, oh, I should mention I'm 32 years old currently. So whatever, however you want to take that, that's up to you. Anyway, Man, this is really cool music. I've, I've never heard this before, but it sounds great. So, let's get to the nitty gritty. Why did I make these games? Other than obviously it's for a contest. Well, to be brief, in 2019, no, sorry, 2018, before I was laid off from my job as a medical biller, I came up with an idea in which and now that I think about it, I have heard this before. I just can't remember the name of the song. But anyway, I came up with an idea in which I wanted people to be excited about playing a card game that was like Magic the Gathering, but it wasn't as expensive and it was more balanced. The key was balance. Excuse me. And that's where I came up with the idea of Potato the, the card game. But like I said, it's not finished. I think I said this, I can't remember. This is like my second time doing this video because this video, because I don't have it scripted. I don't care to have it scripted. I'm tired. It's a weeknight. I just want to get through this. <laughs> but anyway, I don't have all the art for Potato the Card Game. I have the rules. The rules are down. The concept is down. There's a few minor changes that some of the playtesters have told me I need to change in order for some of the cards to stand out more. And I appreciate that. And I need to get on that. But I just don't have the art for it, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and promote it or anything. But um, the reason why I came up with the idea is because I wanted to get back into Magic: The Gathering, but then I remembered it costs way too much money, and it's not worth, it's not worth the money. As pretty as those cards are, and as fun as that game is, it's so unbalanced. Regardless of what format you're talking about, unless maybe vintage. I don't know. I've never gotten into vintage, honestly. But I don't know. So anyway. That's why I made Potato the Card Game. Now these two games, because I mean the whole point of this video is to show off these two games, right? These two that you see here. Ugh, I don't want to go on tangents, but that's that's who I am. I go on tangents and I go on rants, so I apologize in advance. Um, before I even go over these two 
games right here. I'm gonna show you the boxes, but I'm not gonna show you all the components in the boxes because you can see those on the website directly. And also my dinky webcam is not the best. So without further ado, live feed, here we go. The first one that I came up with, and I literally came up with this in the shower, no joke. Just one day, I just like, oh, I should enter that contest. Okay, let's think of a theme, ducks. Okay, let's go further. Ducks in time. And here you go, duck in time. Hell yeah, man. Let's go save some ducks. <laughs> okay, so duck in time is, it's a very lightweight game that anyone can participate in. And I know it says here two to four players, and that's true. Minimum age, eight plus. I honestly think that a six-year-old, a seven-year-old could probably learn these these games and do well. And 15 to 30 minutes, unless you're super competitive and you, and like, it just depends on who you play with. Cause you could have a group who's just like taking their time or you can have a group who's really serious and just get through with it. Anyway, so here's the box one more time, duck in time. Looks like this on the back, which you can... Both of these images are on the web... God damn it. Both of these images are on the website, so you can find out more about it that way. But I just want to show you, this is pretty pristine. I do enjoy and am proud of the components that the Game Crafter gave me with these boxes. So thank you, Game Crafter. Boxes are great. And so here's Bountiful Baskets. Eek. There we go. Like, like I said, my webcam doesn't show the best detail, but look at how happy... Oh, well, not all of them are happy, but but look at these these group of fruits. Aren't they just wonderful? Same thing with Bountiful Baskets. Two to four players, minimum age, eight plus. 15 to 30 minutes, unless you're hardcore or unless you have the ultimate strategy or something. I don't know. Whatever. Here's the back. Very colorful. Uh, just to give you guys a tip out there who may be wanting to do... Uh, tabletop design, one app that really, 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 really saved me a lot of time and um, saved me a lot of stress was uh, Inkscape. Inkscape is for vector art, mainly, but uh, it's, it's a very great tool and I advise anyone who's just getting into tabletop design to go check it out. You won't regret it. Anyway. Before I go on to the the website part and just kind of wrap things up, I just want to give a shout out to my cousin Mary Cruz Fernandez. That's that's the gringo way of saying it, but I don't care. Whatever. I know I know how to say it proper. I know how to say it proper, but just for the fun of it, she's great. Um, I haven't really been able to hang out with her a lot, but you know, when push came to shove, she's like, "Yeah, I'll do the art." I'm like, "Sweet!" So I gave her the themes, and I didn't even tell her like what type of art I was looking for. She just popped up with this stuff. I'm like, perfect, perfect. So thanks again, MC. I like calling you MC because it's easier and I don't sound like a complete gringo. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go from first game uh, concept to the second game concept and then I'll wrap up. So duck in time. Like I said, I came up with this concept in the shower and I thought to myself, I gotta have a freaking a duck stuck in the 80s because come on, wouldn't that be hilarious to be stuck in the 80s? Just freaking listening to safety dance all day long. God. Amazing. But yeah, so we have prehistoric duck, we have the Olympian or Olympic duck, um, explorer duck, 80s duck, western duck, and futuristic duck. And I call the exploration ducks for Quack because that is a kick-ass little sword he has, and he's little little chubbers, a little chubby, but but I like it because it's like me. It's like me if I had armor on because I am a little chubby. Anyway, I'm just gonna go through briefly what all this means and go on from there. So yeah, like I said, uh, Duck in Time is a lightweight uh, family fun family game which focuses on luck, probability, and opportunity because you're basically just going around a track trying to save the ducks before your opponents in order to win the game. But we have, and this is where the components come into play. Where is it? So we have these tokens which are gonna help you, um, I guess help, help you take extra turns, help you steal ducks. Pretty much that's it, as, as if I remember correctly. 
Then we have these time cards, which help you manipulate your turn, as well as your opponent's turns, as well as the duck who is stuck in that time period. So it's anyone's guess what's going to happen when you use those time cards. And uh, yeah, oh, and also this, these die, I chose these dice very specifically because the green die is for movement, so you can move one to six, usually, or typically, I should say. And then this is for moving something else, which I'm not going to go into. You'll just have to find out and purchase the game. Please purchase, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. You don't have to purchase the game. I would just, I'm showing this off because I just want exposure. <laughs> I have no idea how well this is gonna do, so <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> ah, okay. So that's stuck in time. You can download the free or the rules booklet for free if you are curious and you wanna know how to play without actually purchasing it. Um go ahead and download it. That's totally I made it free for a reason. So and then you can read about all about duck in time when you go to thegamecrafter.com, you search duck in time, and you come to this page. Bountiful baskets. All right, so this is the second concept I came up with, and part of the reason why I came up with this concept was, um, honestly, I haven't seen many auction type tabletop games that are, I don't want to say fun, but they're not like exciting. Yeah, exciting. Yeah, we'll go with that. Cause I have at least two, I want to say I have two silent auction games that are fun and somewhat exciting, but not like so exciting that I want to play again over and over and over and over and over, right? Because that's the goal. That's the goal of any any type of game out there. You want your, your audience to be able to play over and over again and say, hey, I love this game so much, I want to play again. Even if I win, I want to play again. That's the goal, right? So hopefully um, whoever plays these games will be like, I want to play again. If you, if you can say I want to play again, then that's going to give me so much more confidence to make more games and to really put myself out there as a um, tabletop designer, because this, like I said, these are my very first instances doing this. So I have no idea what I have in store for myself or for my future. Anyway, Bountiful Baskets Fruit Edition. I will say in this video, there there is at least one other edition I could easily work on from this. There might be a, an, a, a third one, a third one after that, but I don't know yet. But there's at least one more edition I would love to work on, and I already have, I have it all up in here. I have part of it on my computer, but not all of it, so. Anyway, so you have these cute little fruits, and you have these baskets. The baskets are for each player. Each player gets their own basket in which they keep the fruits that they win at the auction house, okay? The more fruits you win, the more points you get. And obviously whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. So Bountiful Baskets is a lightweight, competitive, silent auction game that anyone can participate in. Now, I say competitive lightly here, because like, I mean, some people could just do it. Yeah. Let's put it this way. You can literally, you can literally troll each other in this game and still have fun. It's a good way of putting it. All right, so let's look at the components, what we got here. Each player will have their own little um, mini deck of eight cards, which are auction power cards. I put Roman numerals in the back because I thought that was just aesthetically pleasing and kind of a cool factor. It's like, oh yeah, I, you know, I'm first player or I'm third player, but it really doesn't matter. If you're just playing with two people, you can, all these, um, all these decks have the same powers in them, so it doesn't really matter. You have the Game Masters of the Baskets that every player gets. You have the score pad, which unfortunately in my version, it's all gray. That kind of sucks, but it's okay. It's just a score pad. Um, oh yeah, one thing I got to mention here. If you've ever played Ticket to Ride, there are these secret routes, or I forget what they're called, but you, you pass them out face down to each player and it's like a uh, it's like a goal a secret goal for each player to get these certain routes to get more points obviously at the end of the game these private action ca auction cards excuse me these private auction cards act the same way each player will get at least two private auction cards before the game starts and there are certain goals and conditions which allow each player to receive more points at the end of the game if they follow their private auction card. So read it well. 
<laughs> these fruit cards are basically these up here. I'll tell you all their names right now. Buddy Banana, Aloof Apple, Pouty Pear, and Gentle Grape. So anyway, yeah, you're bidding on those fruit cards and um, whoever gets the most fruit cards and the most points from their private auction cards wins the game. And that's pretty much the rundown of these games. So, to end, um, I have several other ideas in the works. I'll tell you that much right now. And it's it's a huge process um, to do any type of tabletop game design. Even if this fails, I had a blast coming up, coming up with different rules and different mechanics and different themes. And I got to say, you never know. If you want to give it a try, like I said, go to Inkscape. Th think of a theme. Um, ask friends, ask family. Like, what would be fun? You never know what, what can happen when you just sit down and concentrate. That's that's the key word of this this video is concentrate. If you can just concentrate, even if it's for like 10 minutes, you just have no idea what one little idea can blossom into. It's fine explode. I love how I'm ending this off on freaking Sonic 2. I think it's Sonic 2. I think so. Damn. Oh, man. Anyway, um, please, if you have some time, if you're interested, go check out these games on thegamecrafter.com. Duck in Time, Bountiful Baskets, Fruit Edition. And, um, ooh, I'm ending off on, on a very good song. I actually have this song downloaded. I forget what it's called, though. It's, it's by a Ger Swedish? German? Dutch? European artist. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching, and uh, as for the small box contest, I'm really hoping these do well. If they don't do well, I'm hoping they at least get an award of some kind. But we'll see, and I will update you when that happens. So until then, I am Brandon Dennison, and I endorse this- no, <laughs> I approve this message. No, 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 seriously, <laughs> seriously. My name is Brandon Dennison. I am the designer of Duck and Time and Bountiful Baskets, and hopefully, hopefully something good will come of this. Until then, I'll see you all later. Bye bye.